extremely unlikely. All right, well, let's talk about the big stock uh, in the broader markets that has moving that has been moving quite a bit. SR Oil, it's up uh, about 40 percent in the month of uh, June alone, and a big chunk of that has come in the last three four days itself. Varinder will tell us why that stock is buzzing. Varinder. Well, first the news. You know, the reports are suggesting, and it has been going for uh, you know last two or three days, that uh, Russia's Ross Naft can buy you know stake in this company SR Oil. And uh, you know, Rui has may sell nearly 49% stake in the company for nearly 10.500 crore. It may lead to an open offer as well. Remember, Rui has, along with SR Energy PLC, owns nearly 90% stake in SR Oil. We also have a comment from SR Oil where they clearly say that it is not our policy to comment on market speculation. And the company has already submitted to the stock exchange that there is no development or or any event which needs to be reported to the stock exchange. Now the analysis, you know, which is very important. You know, if you just see the current market cap of SR Oil, which is nearly 21. Crore. If you just see the stock, uh, you know, run up in the last five days, it was nearly 100 rupees. From 100 rupees, it has went to as high as 145 rupees. That is only in the last five trading sessions. We all know that the delisting is still stuck with SEB. You know, that is still, we haven't heard anything from SEB in terms of uh, the delisting. There was a uh, floor price of nearly 108 rupees, which was, you know, fixed by the company. We haven't heard anything more on that. Uh, that was in, you know, that is almost one year ago when that delisting news came in and since last one year the stock is stuck at that 100 110 level only it is only in the last five days when the stock has run, run up from 100 to 145 now look at this you know the company is sitting in a gross debt of 25000 crore if you include the short term debt 25000 crore which is nearly five times the net worth the interest cost is nearly 40 to 50 percent of the EBITDA EBITDA you know if you just see EBITDA per barrel it is nearly f only 4.4 Per dollars per barrel, which is lowest in the industry, you know, because the inventory cost for the company, you know, they doesn't include they, they show as as an extraordinary expense. The depreciation and interest cost is nearly four dollars per barrel. I read in one of the IDFC reports so that if you just do an average of last ten quarters, the company has been earning negative, you know, profit per barrel in the last 10 quarters. So you know the the debt is very high, 25,000 crore. So if you just see the EV enterprise value of the company, it's nearly 50,000 crore. So if someone comes or, you know, or to buy 49% stake for 10,500 crores, the numbers are not matching. Even if you just see Rosneft, you know, the name which has been going around, that company itself is sitting on a debt of nearly $44 billion. You know, I saw their chart in terms of how much payment they have to do in 2015. They have to pay nearly $24 billion in 2015. So even that company is debt laden. We all know SR Oil has not been doing great in terms of numbers, huge debt and everything. So one should take all these things with a pinch of salt because the stock has already run up. My fear is that it shouldn't happen that in the next few days we hear only a, a strategic tie-up for crude procurement happening from this Russian giant and not any strategic deal because I think we have to hear from SEBI on the delisting front first and then something might happen. But importantly, keep an eye on the valuation, which is very important. And of course, on the debt, you know, of that 25,000 crore, what happens to that? If someone buys a debt-laden company, buying a debt-laden company, what happens to the debt? Okay. Yes, uh, Sir Oil's history also with debt is not very good. They were uh, the original uh, uh, sellers of the OF series on which they defaulted. Uh, the uh, optionally fully convertible debentures issued in 1993 on which they defaulted in 2000. And a lot of uh, retail debentures were hurt in that. So this is not going to be that easy. And an retail investors must know that uh, nobody has ever made too much money in <laughs> SR Group stocks. Uh, you know, if you go back, uh, whether it was SR Steel or some other stocks, you haven't made too much money. Even for SR Oil, I think it's, what, two years back or three years back, it was 300 plus. Uh, even after the rally, it's half of that. So keep Well, that okay, I, maybe I should make this disclosure. My father uh, had uh, 100 debentures of OF series. It defaulted in 2000. My father died in 2001. So we live to regret his loss. Uh, it, was, it wasn't a great deal of money, but uh, I did feel that uh, my father didn't deserve that deal. Okay, uh, let's get to more practical matters. Biocon is on Ekta's radar. Yes, absolutely. Well, it's arm. Um, Sinjin has received the SEBI nod for an IPO. Remember, they had filed the draft red, in, red herring prospectus on uh, this 22nd of April. The lead merchant banker is Axis Capital, and they're looking to offload, I think, around 2.2 crore shares via an offer for sale, which will uh, and they. 
looking to uh, raise around 600 crores approximately from this deal. That's what we're picking up, which would be around 10 to 11 percent dilution. And they're looking at a July listing if in case, uh, you know, all the approvals come on time. This is something that uh, Mrs. Shaw had told us when she spoke to us as well. And uh, in Jan, just to put things into perspective, Sinjin had sold 10 percent stake to India Value Fund Advisors. That was for 380 crores. So that was an assumption of 3,800 crores for the entire entity. So based on that, uh, they are asking for a premium to that valuation. Remember that it is the contract research and manufacturing arm of Biocon and Biocon who is 86 percent in Sinjin. And just uh, a little bit of data on it. They have around 2,300 scientists and their IPO plans have been pending since as far as I remember. I think maybe 2012. Right. Uh, okay, uh, Sonia, you're watching NBCC. Yes, sir, there's news. So the company, in fact, has made a disclosure to exchanges that they've procured some land in Jaipur for a real estate project. And now why this is important is because real estate is the next growth driver for the company as uh, per the management's comments. They are targeting five projects from the real estate space by the end of October. And they have a big land bank, a 136-acre land bank that can generate almost 4,500 crores of revenues over the next one year. So they've started the process by procuring uh, a land in Jaipur. Fair enough. Thanks a lot for that. Uh, uh, Agam, uh, why are you watching Insecticides India? Uh, well, we have a couple of domestic brokerages which have initiated a buy and they're rather uh, aggressive when it comes to, you know, that pr uh, target prices. Let me begin with Motila Loswal on insecticides. Uh, they put a target target of around 800, which is a good 57% upside from the current market price. And this is on the back of expected ramp-ups in brands, which will actually take uh, its revenues, uh, CAGR, over F515, F516 by as much as 18%. We also have another call from BNK that's, uh, you know, Bhaktiwala. Karani, once again, they've initiated a buy with a price target of 700. That is also entailing uh, about a 35% upside from the current market price. And this is on the back of the CapEx phase being over, which will push company towards new growth levels. And moreover, they're also of the opinion that the ramp up in specialty molecules portfolio, as well as label extensions, will result into sustained growth. All right. Thanks a lot for that. Uh, Ikta, back to you. Uh, Aurobindo, why? M minor positive. They've received a drug approval for basically an anti-epileptic drug, so basically um, uh, for mental illnesses. And uh, it is the generic version of Dilantin from Pfizer. And it is basically the generic name is called Extended Phenotyne Sodium Tablets. The market size is $125 million. And it's uh, just a sentiment positive because there are already around five to six players in the, in the market for this particular drug. All right, well, perhaps you can expect uh, Aurobindo Pharma to move up higher that this year the stock is up almost about 15 odd percent. It's had a bit of a choppy run in the last many months. But uh, Reema is watching Tata Communications as well today. Reema, why is that? Well, uh, Sonia agencies report that ICASA, which is the Independent Communications Authority of South Africa, has given its conditional approval to Vodacom to acquire Neotel from, uh, Neotel from Tata Communications. Remember, in May of 2014, that's a year ago, Vodacom, which is 65% owned by Vodafone PLC, had made an offer to acquire Neotel from Tata Communications for about $565 million. So um, this deal, uh, you know, the approval from ICASA is a step in the right direction, even as we wait uh, the final approval from the Competition Commission. Now, Morgan Stanley says that they expect this deal to happen in F516. Uh, it will help Tata Communication reduce its debt and focus on core business. So the cash from the sale of Neotel can add about 19 rupees to the fair value. So um, one step closer to the deal getting culminated, which is why it's a positive for Tata Communications. All right. Uh, and Sonia, uh, why are you watching Bharat Forge? Well, uh, there's a note that UBS has written uh, where they maintain a buy on the stock with a 12-month target of 1,500. Uh, now, the reason this is important is because, uh, 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 you know, last week the stock fell quite a bit and there were concerns about the North America truck business slowing down. Uh, but a lot of these uh, analysts say that the North America truck outlook continues to be very robust. It's the oil and gas business that's a near-term concern and that's something the management has alluded to. However, the management has an 80 percent visibility of the standalone FY18 sales target of 7,000 crores. So there seems to be no problem on that account. But here's a quick recap of our top 10 stocks today. We have HDFC, m, &M Reliance Communication, Kotak Mahindra Bank, SR Oil, Biocon, NBCC, Bharat Forge, Insecticides India and Tata Communication. Thanks guys for uh, joining us in this segment.